<laughs> How is it? It's good. It's good? Does it taste like peas? No pea. Does it taste like uh, blueberries? Not like this. Um, to me, it's pretty good. It tastes like what you'd have on a cupcake. Okay. So today I'm Rachel Ballard with the website Feast and Farm and I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade natural food coloring that doesn't include beets, spinach, or turmeric and we're going to make some pretty good cupcakes to go along with it. Join me in the kitchen and I'll show you how. To start, we're going to go ahead and put together our powdered colors. And so today we're not using dried beets or, or dried spinach or any of those things. We're going to use Thrive Life freeze-dried fruits and vegetables for this. And I have done this several times and there's a million reasons why this is better. So let's go ahead and open these up and we're going to put them into our coffee grinder. You can do this. These are blueberries. We could do this in a food processor. But we're going to do it in here and I'm going to show you how to grind these up. And we'll just transfer our powdered fruit right into this bowl and repeat with the other colors. You will want to wash out your container in between just so that you make sure your colors stay true. And I'm going to repeat this. So this was blueberries and we use this for blue or purple. And then I'm going to use pineapple for yellow. It's very subtle, but it works well. And then believe it or not, we're going to use peas for green. But because peas are so subtle in flavor, you'd never taste it. So don't be concerned about the vegetables being in there. And then the finally, because I'm out, usually I use freeze dried strawberries here. I'm out of strawberries today. So we're going to swap in a Ruby. Ruby is Thrive Life's powdered fruits and vegetable drink mix that you can use for uh, keeping yourself healthy on the go if you're not really a great fruit and vegetable eater. So I had a pack of this and it's just fruits and vegetables. It's strawberries and apples and cherries and that kind of thing. And so I'm going to use that in the place to make red. So I'll do those for you and be back. What we're gonna make is actually my strawberry shortcake recipe from over on Feast and Farm. So it's very simple and it's gonna be really, really easy to color it. So I just wanted to show you how this works. In here, I've got a half a, a, half a cup or one stick of softened butter. I'm using a lovely grass-fed butter here today. And I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of sugar. The recipe calls for one cup, but I think sometimes you can get by with a little bit less. And anytime you use a little bit less, it's better for your body. You can also use a coconut sugar here if you wanted to. It's gonna make your, um, your cupcake's a little bit dark if you do that, so you may end up with colors that you don't want. So that's just something to keep in mind. Some buttermilk, a half of a cup. If you don't have buttermilk, you can certainly use um, just regular milk. In the South, we call that sweet milk, but <laughs> just regular milk is fine. And then we're gonna add some vanilla, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. I'm not measuring, obviously. And then we're gonna put in a couple of eggs. Now, for my eggs, I always crack them into something else first so that you don't end up putting a bad egg in your recipe. And these are beautiful pastured eggs. That's what we try to use here on our farm. And they're really, really orange and they're just beautiful. Happy chickens make very orange eggs. So we're gonna put the eggs in with the rest of it. And then we're just gonna kind of lightly get this stirred up. Now it's gonna look curdled because we're kind of doing this in, op in reverse of what you're supposed to do it. So that's all right. Just let it look like it looks, get it all mixed in. See what it looks like? Don't worry though, I promise it's gonna be just fine. Now, we're gonna add flour next. Now you can do this with a gluten-free flour, you can do this with whatever flour you choose. I've got some baking powder and some salt back here. My salt is pink because we use pink Himalayan. And I'm gonna put that in. Going back to my fork here. Just get, give those a little stir. There's no need to sift this. You can sift it if you want to, um, just to get out any lumps, but we're not gonna do that today. It's really not necessary. Just saving ourselves steps. We're gonna get this worked in. Then we're gonna transfer portions of this into other bowls so that we can color them and I'll show you how to make your cupcakes. 
as you can see, your battery ends up really smooth. It's, you know, really nice. All that curdling is gone and it looks awesome. So let's get some bowls, get this divided up and get started. Go ahead and take about a quarter of our batter. And you do kind of want to do this quickly because whenever you have baking powder or baking soda in your recipe, it's starting to leaven already. So we want to make sure we don't lose that rise by piddling around too much. So try not to take too long. Now let's make green because that's fun. So I've got several tablespoons here, but what I'm going to recommend is starting with maybe one, just stir it in, see what your color looks like. And if you want it more vibrant, you can certainly add more. The thing to remember about natural food coloring is you're never really going to get the color that you get from synthetic, but you have to be okay with that. There's always a trade-off for health. And so we're okay with that trade-off. And I promise you this won't take like, taste like peas. When we first made it, my kids suggested we use the peas, and I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to use the peas, but we did, and they were really surprisingly good. So I know that I would rather use peas than a lot of the alternative natural frostings or natural colors that are on the market are using spinach or beets or things that have really, really strong flavors, and I'm just not... <laughs> Not real interested in that one. Okay, so you can see the color is kind of pale. I'm going to taste it actually. I taste no peas. Not at all. It's delicious. Okay, so there's green. We'll set that aside and I will repeat with the other colors. All you're gonna need to do, this is my USA Pans muffin tin. Lovely, lovely, lovely kitchen tools to have. USA stuff, it just does not stick. It does not leave you hanging. So I really like it for that purpose. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put bits of each of the colors into each muffin tin. I'm gonna take a little bit of green. We're gonna drop that in one side over here. Let your kids help with this kind of stuff. This is, this is kid friendly cooking right here. Okay, put a little pink on this side. Either your plain or your pineapple. Then we'll do a little bit of our blue on top. So just repeat that process however you wanna mix them in all along your muffin tins. And once you've got them mostly full, just gently swirl them. I would just kind of swirl the top. I don't know if I'd get all the way to the bottom or not, but a fun little swirl in there and they're gonna bake up and look really, really neat. And I will put these in the oven. They're gonna go in the, at 350 for hmm, 20 minutes. You just have to keep an eye on them in your oven. Everybody's oven's different. And when they're all done, I will show you what they look like. To learn all the details for making your own natural food coloring, you can find out more in the description area above this video. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you again later. Bye guys.